In the first section of this tutorial, we will review the context and the theory of the eigenvalue elasticity analysis. So the first question that we need to ask and to answer is why is this analysis required? It is a common understanding within the system dynamics field that the systemic structure drives the behavior. But what is actually driving this systemic behavior and what is the relation with structure? So as an example, we have here an stock variable and the behavior of an stock variable called pressure to change. This particular stock variable is part of a system dynamics model with more than 15 loops. So how can we analyze which loop is driving the behavior, for instance, between time 6 and time 18? What we can infer from here is that different loops are taking different importances in different points in time. So the analysis of large-scale models are really complex and previous to this eigenvalue elasticity analysis have been based on informal methods like trial and error and also like the cost strip analysis implemented in Benzim. So the eigenvalue elasticity analysis emerged as a way to to implement a formal method for relating loop strength or how Im important are different loops to different patterns of behavior. So a brief history about this method. This method was introduced by Nathan Forrester in his PhD dissertation back in 1982. Christian Kampmann in 96 refined the method with graph theory and linked the systemic behavior to feedback loops. Rogelio Oliva in 2004 complemented this method, defining how to choose an independent loop set from the complete loop that we can have in a system dynamics model. In 2006, Kampmann and Oliva defined loop influence as a good measurement of the systemic behavior and also implemented the method in three examples. So in this particular tutorial we will be reviewing one particular example of this paper, this 2006 paper, in detail in the following sections. The main idea of the eigenvalue elasticity analysis is that we need to linearize the system for each time step. Here we can see an equation in which we can relate the vector of first time derivatives of the state variables or the stock variables with the Jacobian matrix of the system. Here the Jacobian matrix will be related to the idea to have a state variable or a stock variable to have the first time derivative of that stock variable and, related, and relate that first time derivative to other stock variables. For example, if we have a stock variable with an inflow and an outflow the first time derivative of that particular stock by, uh, variable will be the inflow minus the outflow. So the Jacobian matrix and the elements of the Jacobian matrix will be relating that particular first time derivative to other stock variables of the system. That would mean that the elements of the Jacobian matrix in some sense will represent different link gains and also it is important to define what are the loop gains that we can see in a system. So the loop gains will be defined as a product of the link gains within a particular loop. So the specific focus will be on eigenvalues of the Jacobian matrix of the system. So if we take the determinant of the difference between the Jacobian matrix 
and the eigenvalues times the identity matrix of n dimension because we have n state variables we will get the eigenvalues of the Jacobian matrix and also we can get the eigenvectors associated with that eigenvalues additionally this analysis allows to link eigenvector to loop gains through the loop influence so the loop influence of a loop gain g on eigenvalue lambda will be defined with this equation the particular objective of this tutorial is not to review the mathematics in detail but to see what will be the results of this method so and as a summary the eigenvectors are associated with system behavior for instance exponential growth or decline and also additionally the eigenvalues of the Jacobian matrix can be real or complex in the case that we have real eigenvalues if we get positive real eigenvalues we can relate that result to an exponential growth behavior and on the other hand if we have negative real eigenvalues we can relate that particular result to an exponential decline behavior in the case of complex eigenvalues the complex eigenvalues are related to oscillations so if we have the real part of a complex eigenvalue positive that particular result is related to expanding oscillations on the other hand if we have negative real parts of the complex eigenvalues we will have damping oscillations so as a brief example we will review some results that were obtained in the 2006 paper this particular system dynamics model has two stock variables industrial structures and water reserves here we will review the particular behavior of industrial structures we can see here four areas in the first area we can see an exponential growth in the second area we will see a balancing growth after that in the third area we can see an exponential decline and after that a balancing decline so how can we analyze which loops are dominant here here we can see the two eigenvalues associated with this system and well if you remember the Jacobian matrix is defined as the elements that describe the first time derivatives of different stock variables to other stock variables so that would mean that the Jacobian matrix will have a, a dimension of the number of the stock variables in the system in this particular system we have two stock variables meaning that we will have two eigenvalues it is important to note that the eigenvalue number one is not related to the stock variable number one in the Jacobian matrix it is only different eigenvalues associated to the system but not associated to particular stock variables so here if you remember correctly eigenvalues that are real and also positive are associated to exponential growth in this case until year 24 approximately we have one eigenvalue positive and the other zero so this this would mean that this particular stock variable will have an exponential growth until this this time after that the difference between the absolute values of these two eigenvalues will change and in a particular point in time the eigenvalue number two that is only negative will start to dominate 
So that will explain the change in the behavior after regions 2, 3, and 4. But the interesting part is that how can we analyze different, the different influences that we can extract from the different loops within the system? So as we, as we saw, the eigenvalue elasticity analysis allow, allows us to understand the loop influence on each particular eigenvalue. For instance, this graph shows the six loops and also the influence on that on the eigenvalue number one. Here we can see that one particular loop is dominant until time almost 24 that is related also to the peak in the to the start to to, to the start in the decline of the eigenvalue number one so here we can see that this dominant loop is related also to the dominant uh, exponential growth behavior of the industrial structure stock on the other hand the loop influence that are related to the eigenvalue number two are really different the influences are zero until time 20, 21, 22 and that is the the same start time in which the eigenvalue number two is starting to the to to show the behavior the negative behavior in the system and also here we can see that two loops are dominant because this particular loop the positive one is not high enough to compensate these two behaviors here of these two loops so in some sense this particular methodology allows us to see what are the loops that are driving the behavior of the system through the eigenvalues it is important to note also that we will review in this tutorial an example in detail and how can we understand these results and how can we analyze these results from a particular system dynamics model so the key takeaways of this analysis is this is that this is a formal way to analyze how the system structure drives the behavior it is based on eigenvalues of the Jacobian matrix of the state variables it is really resource in intensive because we need to calculate eigenvalues for each time step and the method requires export of Benson results to Mathematica and also analyze the mathematical results in a different software in this case in Excel so in the next sections we'll be reviewing how this particular method can be implemented The model that we will be analyzing here is a medium-sized model of the economy as generated by Nathaniel Mass in 1975. This model explores the mechanisms responsible for the fluctuations in the macroeconomy with a characteristic period of 3 to 7 years, commonly known as the business cycle. This model has 8 stocks and is mainly divided into labor, with vacancies as another stock, inventory, average production rate, and generation and use of capital. Our next step is to build the output file that we need with the information of the gains and the elasticity graphs. And we have to do this starting from a Bensim file which contains the representation of the system we want to model. So, in broad terms, what we have to do is get a whole lot of files ready to be loaded into Mathematica and then Mathematica will output a TXT file which we will load into an Excel template which will then, uh, then give us the output that we need. Now, which files do we need to load into Mathematica? These are four files. Three of those we have to load, and one of uh, one of these has to be loadable. That means it has to be available for Mathematica 
for when it is needed. And there's a specific directory in, math in your computer that Mathematica indicates as the directory where the loadable files should be located. So we will we will see it when we go through Mathematica. But uh, for for the files that need to be loaded first, we will need to load through two files that are derived from the Vensim model. The first of these files is um, the file which contains the information of the model in terms of the loops, the variables, the equations, and so on, um, which would be in uh, must be in a format suitable for Mathematica. And this is we can obtain this through an online tool generated by um, Rogelio Oliva, which is called the MDL2NB tool online tool. We will show you where to get this tool. So that is the first file, the file which contains the information of the model. The second file is the file that contains the information for each of the steps for the simulation of the model. And this can be obtained from Bensim directly. We'll show you how to do this. So these two files are, are derived from the original model. The third file that we have to load is the LEA file, which means the loop eigenvalue um, elasticity analysis. This file, it's a standard um, Mathematica file which contains the functions that will extract from these other uh, files that we load into Mathematica the elasticities. So this has to be loaded into Mathematica. Um, well, once Mathematica has, uh, has been loaded these three files and it can have access to this fourth file, then Mathematica will process this information and generate a text file which will then um, require us to um, indicate where it should be uh, saved. And uh, once we have generated this output file, we can load it through the template that we also get online in Rogelio Oliva's uh, site, and then we can get the output that we require. Good. The next step is to generate the Mathematica file which contains the information of the model. And as we told you before, this can be done in an online uh, uh, tool that was created by, G by Rogelio Oliva and which you can access through this um, website. We will give you the websites at the end of the presentation. And once you get into the website, you can see a whole lot of information. There are some case studies, one of which we are going through now. Uh, that is the uh, process for obtaining the, the gains and the loops. And what we're looking for is this link here, the Vensim model to Mathematica Notebook Utility. If we um, get into this site, we see um, what it will give you. The input file is the MD, MDL file, the Vensim MDL file. And the output is a Mathematica NB file with nine subsections, which is a list of the level variables, the initial conditions for the level variables, a list of auxiliary variables, a list of model parameters, the list of table functions, a list of simulation parameters, and a list of summary variables needed uh, by Campan's modules, which we are not going to use at this moment. Uh, there is a very important thing here, which has to do with the limitations of the model, which you, you should read carefully before loading any file to be converted into Mathematica. If, if, if it doesn't follow these instructions, it will simply not load. Uh, it has several limitations. Some of these uh, re are regarding the format of the variables and others uh, regarding the functions that are considered in the model. First of all, for instance, spaces or underscores are removed um, from the variable names. So this, uh, this can be consistent, consistent with mathematical notation. Uh, also, um, special characters um, are not supported. So that's important to take care in your model that you have no special characters there. Also, some special functions such as max, min, etc., are not supported. And you should, if you need to use them in your model, you should replace them manually when you get the output of uh, for Mathematica. Some other dynamic functions such as smooth or delay are not supported either. If then else statements are not supported also. 
uh, and the table functions are recognized only if they follow the format used for the graphical representation in Venison, for instance. Macros and arrays are not supported. So, the, so there's a whole range of restrictions in uh, regarding the models that can be used through this method. But anyway, uh, the, the models can be simplified or can be uh, put into the, the required the required format and it, it should be enough. Here we have a Vensim version of the model we discussed earlier, masses model. The model is represented in three views. The first view is uh, the goods view with the inventory and the average production rate. The second view is the labor view with the vacancies and the labor stocks. And the third one is the capital stock. This model is also um, built here with the short na shortened names for each of the variables and stocks in order to avoid problems when converting this to, to the mathematical file. You will find this version in the files that we deliver with, it, with, with this tutorial. So if we run this model, We get a behavior of inventory, for instance, that is nonlinear. A similar characteristic we will we'll obtain in the in the average production, and the backlog will also suffer such a behavior, nonlinear behavior. So what we want to do here is, among the many loops that we can get from the simplify model, which loops are responsible for each of these behaviors in the model through time. That is what we want to get. So, uh, as we spoke at the, at the beginning of the tutorial, what we have to get from the Benson model are two, two things. First is the NB file, the mathematical file, which we, we already got. And now we have to get the tab file, which will contain all the information for every step of the simulation for this model. So we already did that. We uh, simulated the model, and this created a, a file that's called base5s.bdf, which we will use then to generate the tab file. How do we do that? We go to the model menu, and then we export the data set. Which data set? The one we're talking about, base5s.bdf, which is the data set we uh, used for the simulation. We open that. And then we say we want the tab delimited file and has to be uh, going down. The, the time has to run down. And we do that. Okay. We overwrite the one we already did. So that is uh, the simple process. We have to go to the model and then export data set. And it's very simple. Our next step is to download a copy of the files that Rogelio Oliva has made available for us in his website and which serve as assistance for the process that we um, have to follow in Mathematica. These are three files as we showed in the in the summary. The first one is the LEA notebook file. This is a Mathematica format, format file which um, contains the formulas that will obtain the gains and the loops and the eigenvalues for uh, the specific model. The feedback loops package, it's an m file, dot m file, which should be loadable in Mathematica. That means you have to download a copy and put it in the uh, folder where Mathematica looks for these types of files. And the third one is the Excel template, where you will have to load the results that Mathematica will generate after it has run its processes with all the required inputs. So they are all right here. You should download. You should download a copy of this. Okay. So before we can run the process in Mathematica now, now that we have the three files that need to be loaded, we have to. Um, make a fourth file available to Mathematica, which is the loadable file, which is this uh, feedbackloops.m file that we downloaded from, uh, from the online site. 
how do we find out where to put this file? Well, Mathematica has to has a specific folder that is uh, designated a loadable the, the folder for the loadable files, and this um, can be um, identified through these commands we see here in the in the Mathematica help book. The base directory and the user base directory are the commands that will lead us to that to that. Um, to, to that um, directory, to that folder. And it, you can find this in the section A8.2, loadable files, in the Mathematica uh, main book. Um, and how do you get that? You have to open the, the Mathematica kernel. It's very simple. And then you input these commands, which is base directory. We copy that. Put it in there, and it will tell me what is my base directory where Mathematica will go and look for the base files, for the loadable files. And the same thing with this one. I'd say put it in both directories so it will find them. In my case, those are the folders, but in your case, this may differ. So now we have all the components for the Mathematica process. This means we have the file which we have called here mass.nb which contains the data for the specific model we have the lea file which we downloaded from Rogelio Oliva's website which we have called here mass underscore lea.nb we have the tab file available which we will have to input in a moment when we begin running the process and we have located the feedback loops.m file in the folder where Mathematica, your Mathematica uh, version uh, uses or seeks for the loadable files. So we have all the four components. So let's look first at, at each of these files. These files contain, for instance, this file, which is the, the one containing the information for the model, has several sections, which as uh, was, was indicated previously, are nine sections. And each of these sections contains, for instance, we look at levels, it contains the different levels that are considered in the in the model. The variables it looks for the variables and so on. It has all the information for this specific model. And how do we load this in, in, in Mathematica? When, once it, it is open, we go to um, evaluation and evaluate notebook. That's it. Nothing should nothing else should happen. It should evaluate it, and that means it would load the values and it will keep them in memory for the next step, which is now to run this other file. And this file has a little bit more, more information. It has a, um, a part which has to be has to do with import simulation data, obtaining the simulation data file and data preparation. Then it has some functions. Which will use uh, it will use to derive the information that we require, which are the gains and the loops and so on. So what we do here is once we have loaded the mathematical file with the information for the specific model, now we run this this file. So we go to evaluation and evaluate notebook. It is running now, and it should at one moment. Or another ask us about the location of the tab file. There it goes. This pop up uh, window uh, requires us to indicate where the tab file is located. So, um, in our case, we go to where the tab file is located, which is in our desktop, and this is our tab file. So, we open it. And the model is running. And if we go uh, to the bottom of the model, we see that it begins generating numbers, which correspond to the different eigenvalues for each of the steps that it is running. And we leave the model running because it will run for, for a couple of minutes. After going through the steps we have gone together, we are going to have this Excel file. This Excel file will eventually help us analyzing our model. As you can see, 
This file contains a variety of worksheets that we will first go through them to see what kind of information we should expect to extract from each one. In the very first worksheet, all the available output is listed along with the general description of each one. You might refer to this as a quick guide when you are doing your analysis. The second tab contains all available data which is categorized in the other worksheets. All this data are coming from our Vensi model and Mathematica notebook. The third worksheet shows the real part of our system's eigenvalues at different times. As you can see, since we have nine stocks in our model, we also have nine different eigenvalues which you can find a real part value here in this worksheet at different times. The fourth tab is just the graph of those values as the real part of our eigenvalues change with time. The fifth and the sixth worksheets display the imaginary parts of our system's eigenvalues at different times. Here you can see the actual values of those imaginary parts and the, in the next worksheet you can see the graph of the eigenvalue, imaginary part of our eigenvalues changing with time. The next worksheet simply lists all the loops active in our model with a unique number assigned to each of them. The next worksheet shows a table of the loop gains for the 10 loops with the largest gains in our model. It should be noted that since the order of magnitude for different variables in a system might not be the same, it is really hard to compare different loops based on this indicator. Instead, in the LEEA analysis, loop influence indicator will be used, which is shown in the last two worksheets. As you can see in the next worksheet, the loop gains for different loops are shown in a graph with changing with time. In the next worksheet, the loop influence values are listed for each eigenvalue at different times. Both a real part and absolute value of loop influence may be looked up in this table. As you can see, for the specified eigenvalue, the 10 loops with largest absolute value of loop influence are listed. By changing the specified eigenvalue, the table will be updated automatically, and you can see the most influential loops for that specific eigenvalue. Also, in the same worksheet, there is a graph for real parts of loop influences changing with time for the specific eigenvalue and its 10 most influential loops. The last worksheet is also dedicated to loop influence values. Here, you can choose one specific eigenvalue and a point in time and then you can see the 10 most influential loops on that eigenvalue at that time. Again, both absolute and real part values are listed. Also, a very convenient scatter plot is provided in this worksheet. As you can see, the further a loop is from the vertical axis, the larger its influence on this eigenvalue will be. Also, negative real part means stabilizing effect, while the positive real part shows destabilizing behavior. Now we can go and start our analysis. If we look at the model behavior, we can see that the system tends to stabilize after a while. And before that, the two 
there are two oscillations with different periods. By looking at the system's eigenvalues, the real part of our system's eigenvalue, we can see that all of them are negative. This confirms the stabilizing behavior. Moreover, if we look at the imaginary parts of our eigenvalues, we see that three pairs of our eigenvalues are complex, accounts for the oscillatory, oscillatory behavior. These eigenvalues are 3 and 4 with periods of 4.3 years, 5 and 6 with periods of 8.3 years, and 8 and 9 with periods of 20 years. It is important to notice that just by looking at the system's behavior, we can observe the long-term and short-term oscillations, but we cannot see the middle-term one. Now we will attempt to find out the most influential loops responsible for each of these oscillatory behaviors. It should be mentioned that by looking at the graph of change of our real part and imaginary part of the eigenvalues, we will find out that after time equal 5, these values are almost constant. So without loss of generality, we will just look at time equals 8 for our analysis. First, we will look at our short cycle oscillation. For doing so, we are going to look at the eigenvalue number 3 at time equals 8. As you can see, the loops 12, 6, and 24 are the most influential loops on this eigenvalue. If we go on the loops tab, we can see what are these loops account for. These loops are capturing the workforce production, and inventory dynamics of our system. Also, if we look at the real part of the loop influential indicator for these loops, you can see that all of them are negative. That means that these loops will have a stabilizing effect on this oscillation as time goes on. Now we will go to eigenvalue number 5 which accounts for a middle-term oscillation. As you can see, loop 6 has the strongest influence on this eigenvalue, with a positive real part. Loop 6 corresponds to workforce dynamics. And like the previous eigenvalue, it has a strong effect on the oscillation. But this time, it has a destabilizing effect. So the workforce, although may have a stabilizing effect, effect on our short-term oscillation, we should be careful, careful that it might have a destabilizing effect on middle-term. For looking at our long-cycle oscillations, we'll look at eigenvalue number 8. As you can see, loop 1, 7, and 16 has the biggest influence on this eigenvalue. Loop number one is about capital accumulations, and loops seven and sixteen captures the capital adjustment processes. Again, all these eigenvalues have negative real part, which means the stabilizing oscillatory behavior. These results are in agreement with the ones that Mass has figured out in 1975 by doing intense partial model analysis. But we have, a, what we have been able to do that in a shorter and more robust way. At this time, our tutorial will be concluded. We hope that it has been useful for you. Please give us your feedback and let us know if you have any further questions. Thank you.